Okay, so there's going to be three uh, stages to uh, this project. And the first stage is you're going to do some uh, research. Uh, second stage, you're going to do some sketching. And the third stage is to actually do some, uh, some soap uh, carving. Um, first of all, before we get into um, looking at some work of uh, Barbara Hepworth, we're just going to talk about um, 2D and 3D. In particular, we're going to talk about form. Um, when we use the word shape, we're talking about a two-dimensional shape. So here we can see some examples, square, diamond, rectangle, um, hexagon, circle, triangle. When we talk about form, we're talking about three-dimensional, um, three dimensions, okay? So we're talking about, as you can see here, cuboid, cube, sphere, cylinder, prism, and cone. So there is, uh, there is a difference between shape and form. So when I use the word form, or when we use the word form in 3D design, we are talking about a three-dimensional object. There are many types of form, but we're just going to very quickly touch upon three. Um, first one is geometric form, <coughs> which comes from geometry. And as you can see, the shapes in examples here uh, all have uh, the faces which are um, geometric shapes. So we've got, a hex we've got a hexagon, we've got a triangle, we've got a square, we've got a, po um, a pentagon, we've got a triangle. Um, but obviously then those shapes um, are uh, repeated to form a uh, three-dimensional uh, form, in this case, geometric. And the common... Um, element there is usually obviously those shapes that make up the form um, are use straight lines. Organic form um, could be seen as being taken from from nature okay so um, a lot of designers are inspired by organic form and we'll probably be using that term a lot um, in the future with regards to 3D design and you can see some examples of organic form here um, so they're not specifically um, they're not specifically replicas of something that comes from nature, but you could recognise these the structures that are used in these organic forms as being from from nature. So you could say that this was kind of like a, a coral, a sea coral or a sea sponge because of the holes. Uh, you could kind of see this as being like a almost like a spine of some sort. You could kind of see this as almost being kind of almost a brain kind of shaped and it's got these holes which are not regular and not the same um, they are organic in themselves and then you've got this other form here which is almost a kind of shell um, shell like in, in, in its form so organic form from nature and then the third the third common form is the human form and obviously you can see some sculptures here which take the human form they're not exact replicas they're not exact carvings of a human uh, they have been kind of distorted in some way or they are an abstract um, version of um, a human form so we've got geometric form organic form and human form three examples of, of three-dimensional form so um, the first thing that or the first task that I would like you to attempt is to produce a, a research sheet uh, or two research sheets in fact on the artist Barbara Hepworth and I would like you to just explore um, her as a, a sculptor as an artist find out um, some First of all, maybe some facts about her, where she worked, who she was, and then to try and kind of explain where she got her inspiration from. So I want you to use uh, the, the internet as your research tool and find some information on Barbara Hepworth. There would be some um, websites on the blog to help you, to guide you with that. Um, I would like you to try and type this out yourself. So don't just copy and paste the text that you find. 
please try and type this out yourself in your in put it into your own words so please don't use any language that you don't understand but you can see here what I've done is I've got her name in bold date of birth so we get an idea of what, what, what kind of era what kind of years we're talking about what kind of decades we're talking about uh, in, in a period of time and then who she was what she did um, and there's a bit about her, her work here so she wanted to create art that was calm that people could enjoy looking at so you're not just reading off lots of facts about her um, there are only a few facts I said it was an English artist and sculptor her work is a great example of modernism art movement and modern sculpture one of the few female artists of her generation to achieve international fame she was a leading figure in the colony of artists who lived in St. Ives during the Second World War. And that's pr pretty much it as far as the facts about her go. And then I'm talking about her work, why she, where she got inspiration for her, from her work from. And um, particularly down here, the artists of the St. Ives group wanted their sculptures to look like they had been formed by the landscape. Like pebbles found on the beach. This sculpture is called Oval. The sculptures look a bit like a stone. And I've kind of took talked a bit about what I think the these sculptures um, look like so you know all all of her sculptures uh, well not all of them but most of her sculptures use this this whole feature it's, they usually have a hole in them and she she got that from the landscape from 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 caves from openings and she kind of like wanted people to look not just look at her work but actually look through it and see the landscape through the sculpture and a lot of her sculptures are uh, in St Ives in a garden and you know particularly this one here on the right hand side we can see that if you were to walk up to that sculpture you would be able to see through it and you would be able to see part of the landscape maybe the sea through it maybe the uh, the coast on the other side maybe the land on this side but it kind of creates almost like a little window or frame for you, the viewer of the work, to see the landscape actually through or in her sculptures. So she had a real connection to nature. So when we're talking about form with her work, we're talking about organic form. But we could also be talking about human form because as with this sculpture in the middle here, it, some of her sculptures do take on uh, human form as is with the sculptures down here in the bottom left as well. So the first page, I want you to do two slides. The first slide um, is going to be a little bit of information about Barbara Hepworth and some pictures. Be nice to actually, I've, I've, I've tried to choose some pictures with her in it and of her working. So you can see her here, she's working with a hammer, a mallet and, and a chisel um, to kind of illustrate that, you know, she did all this work by, by hand. And obviously this is what you're going to do. You're going to do some carving um, obviously in soap not stone or wood as she did but um, you are going to kind of try and replicate one of her uh, her sculptures and then the second slide I would like you to, to attempt is more of uh, a mood what we call a mood board a collection of images and what I've done here is I've, I've talked about uh, I've talked about abstract art so I want you to uh, find out a definition for of abstract art because um, obviously her, her her work is is abstract she's not carving exact replicas of humans or exact replicas of things she's found in nature she is abstracting them her style was also uh, um, is also is also seen as being modernist so I'd also would like you to find out find a definition for modernism so I've got my definition here for modern modernism I've got my definition here for abstract art again I will give you some links to some websites to help you with that but you can see that my definitions are very concise I'm not typed out a lot and a lot of text and again try as much as you can to type this in your own words and here at the bottom I've just annotated this page with you know I've said Barbara Hepworth was inspired by Cornwall she took the shapes of pebbles caves and drip with driftwood and sculpted the forms from wood stone and marble based on these natural forms and then I've illustrated that with some pictures of, of, of pebbles found on the beach which have had, had holes worn in them um, alongside some of her work I found some pictures of some driftwood again which has 
holes in it. I mean, I've just gone onto Google and typed in driftwood with holes and beach pebbles with holes. And there's also a cave here from Corn. So I've typed in Cornish caves and found these images of caves. And you can really clearly see the link between these landscapes and these natural forms which occur naturally in nature on a beach uh, on the coast of Cornwall in her work so you can see we can clearly see the link between uh, a Barbara Hepworth sculpture and natural forms which are found on a beach in nature in Cornwall and the last thing I've done is just to pick out some key words so what I'd like you to do is just look at the images and just type words that you think are relevant and that you think of when you look at her work I kind of think that this is kind of egg shaped so I've typed an egg this is look like a shell there's that those words organic forms you could say natural forms um, curved her work is very very curved she cut into the she's cut into there holes are very prominent in her work as I said because they create spaces in the window I've viewed the word spaces I've used the word caves really anything else you can think of smooth because they're very smooth um, uh, the, the, the surface is 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 here you've got cracks in it so it's kind of very natural it's not perfect other surfaces are st very stone she's marble she's used wood so you could mention the material she's talking about um, so really some descriptive words that you would use if you were trying to maybe explain Barbara Hepworth's work to someone and the relationship uh, between her work and, and nature. To start this or to start this project, what I would like you to do is set up a new PowerPoint slide um, and just make sure that um, it is uh, A4. So get rid of the boxes as well. Start with a blank page, obviously. Uh, if you go to design and slide size, custom slide size, then the slides, the width is 29.7 and the height is, is 20, uh, 21. Okay, so 29.7, 21 and it's landscape on the slides. So you'll get an A4 sheet, basically an A4 slide this way around. Start with two blank slides and then obviously start begin to create your your research or two research sheets okay you don't have to do or I don't want you to do these two slides these two slides are just um, for me to talk a little bit about 2d 3d forms and geometric organic and human forms. so you don't have to do those just want you to do slides five and six so just two slides of research and that's it for the first part of this project. Good luck.